Good morning, New Hope. Oh, man, I don't know about you, but that song that we just sang was perfect, wasn't it? Uh, What a perfect song to sing right before uh, we hear a message, this idea that we are saying to God, yes, I will, right? Like, whatever you're going to invite me into, whatever you're going to ask of me, whatever I'm going to learn, yes, I will, because you're the God who's working all things out behind the scenes. You're the one that I can trust and praise and glorify no matter what. I think that's incredible. Uh, I'm excited as we kick off a brand new series today called Seasons, all right? And so uh, over these next five weeks, we're going to talk about spring and summer and fall and autumn, or uh, fall, autumn, and winter, Uh, actually. And then next week is a standalone week. Uh, We're going to do something special for Mother's Day. Uh, that's going to be really fun. So one of the things that is sort of like a, a, a joke, it's not a jokey joke, it's more of like a serious joke that happens all the time in the office here is we talk about, uh, as, all, as all of us get older and older and older, right, we're always like, oh, you know what, it'd be really nice to live somewhere warmer, right? That's like, a, that's like I know, there's like people that get really excited about that. Uh, so yeah, like we have like, we have to pray sometimes just to have God sort of settle us down a little bit. But I, I want to say this because I really believe this in my whole life. I've lived in places like this. It, in so many ways, it is such a gift to live in a place where there's all four seasons, Right? Like that, that, the, there's, there's some benefit to that. Now I know, like Rick and Sandy, you guys are like bailing on this Four Seasons thing. I know, I know. Uh, but, but the idea uh, this month, the big idea is this. Spiritually, we cycle through seasons as well. Don't we? We do. Right? And so the idea for spring is that there's like growth and in, in new life in spring, right? And, and then we sort of move into the warmth of summer but do you notice like at some point in summer, like that growth and new life sort of slows down and stops? Like at some point that heat, that sun scorches things a little bit and the grass just like isn't green anymore and just kind of dies. And then you have the beauty and harvest of fall. And then the cold, dormant death of winter. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes... Uh, Uh, we feel like when we're in certain seasons, like we've done something right. You know what I mean? Have you ever done that? Like when you're in a season in your life or in a season spiritually that feels like springy and new and fun, you're like, I must must be living well or doing the right things. And, And then other times when we're in a difficult season, we feel like we've done something wrong, right? Like if I had just done something different in some ways, this has got to be my fault Uh, But here's the thing. The truth is that just like seasons happen naturally, uh, that happens naturally for us as well. It's very normal in life for us to experience spring and summer and fall and winter, for us to experience all of those things. And it's not necessarily a reflection on how you've lived your life. And so let's, let's look at the series graphic again. Let's put that up. I want to say thanks to Megan Pazinski for just always her, her incredible series artwork. Isn't that beautiful? Um, I, I just love that. And, and I want to say this. Each season, she did such a great job in this graphic, didn't she? Each season is beautiful and has beauty, doesn't it? Isn't this true? Right? Um, and, and I love the small thought we get from the book of Ecclesiastes that we walked through together last August in a series we did called The Meaning of Life, right? Um, and, and I have read this, this verse in particular at every graveside service I have ever done uh, over 25 years uh, of ministry. Um, and this is just such an important reminder. Look at this. Ecclesiastes 3.1 tells us, there is a time for everything. In a season for every activity under the heavens. Isn't that so good? Right? And and, and then from verse 2 through verse 8, each of those verses contains a set of two different sort of contrasting things. And in many cases, we see one of those things as positive, and we see the other one, uh, we kind of believe it's, it's more negative. Right? Like, let me give you a few examples. It says, a time to be born... And a time to die. 
we see one of those as positive and we don't see one of those as quite as positive, right? Like a little more negative. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear and a time to mend, right? Things we perceive as positive and then things we believe to be negative. But here is an interesting truth that we experience in both the physical and spiritual worlds. Ready? Every season is essential and has a purpose. It serves a purpose, right? Every season. The ones you like, the ones you don't like. It's essential and it serves a purpose. Let me give you two just really quick. That why it's good to have all these different seasons, why they're essential, why they serve a purpose. Isn't it true that we tend to appreciate a season more because we just experience something different? Right? Our appreciation goes up. Uh, if it's been an especially cold, longer feeling winter, don't we love spring even more? And if it's been a super hot summer, don't we just love the cooler weather of the fall? Right? Like we, we have an increased appreciation. Now, if you live in a place that it's always exactly the same, pretty much, that can get, I know some of you were like, no, I will take that one out. But it gets a little bit boring, right? You don't have the same level of appreciation for, for what you're experiencing. And so variety is a good thing. It's nice to have different things. And if you have different seasons and so you live in different ways, you, you have different food options, right? Like when the season changes, some foods come into season and others go out. There's different activities you can do at different times of year. And so that gives you, like, like when it's winter, you, you usually stay in with your friends and your family more, you know? So you, there's just different things. Let me, let me tell you something interesting. So this year, like starting right now, we're in spring, right? Spring um, is, the length of spring this year is 92 days 17 hours and 54 minutes. Whoever figured this out, I don't understand, but, but that's how long spring is. Summer, it's about a day longer, just a couple hours short of a day longer, is 93 days, 15 hours and 49 minutes. Fall is 89 days, 20 hours and 38 minutes. And winter is 88 days, 23 hours and 34 minutes minutes. So just like in the physical world, right, in our lives, seasons are all different lengths, right? Did you notice that? And while winter always seems the longest, it's actually the shortest. Crazy, isn't it? It always feels the longest, but in actuality, it's always the shortest. So let's just take a poll. Can we take a poll? So by a show of hands, if you are, if you are watching online, I want to encourage you, like if you have like a chat option, like put your vote in, in the comments right now. So like, let's take a poll. If you're in the room, raise your hand. If you're watching, just comment on the live stream. So what is your favorite season? So for you, if it's spring, let me see hands for spring. Okay, who would say summer? Whose favorite season is summer? All right, who would say fall? We got, uh-huh. This is very interesting. Now, who would say winter? Any winter people here? Oh, man, we have like, okay. So really, that was very, like, I don't know about those of you online, but it was very interesting in the room. Uh, really, probably summer and fall, like one, spring was super close, and winter we actually had winter people, but it was just, that was the only one that wasn't, like the other three were kind of even. That was, that was really interesting. I am a spring-fall guy, right? If I could go from spring to fall, back to spring, and then to fall again, I would do that. Now, I want to speak to a different group of people, because some of you were like, I don't really think like that. If I could go from deer season <laughs> to turkey season... Back to deer season, and then because getting a turkey is a little harder than getting a deer, if I, I'm going to add, like, if I go to turkey slash mushroom season, right? Because sometimes you don't get a turkey, but you get some mushrooms, so you're like, woohoo, right? Like, I would do that. If I could find a place on the planet that every day of the year was 68 to 72 degrees, ever so slight breeze, I would have to prayerfully consider moving there immediately, all right? That's just, I'm a spring fall guy. It's just what I love. So I'm excited today because, you know, the first season we're going to talk about, if I had to pick between those two, 
would be my favorite. And this month, this is the one I get to talk about during uh, it actually happening, right? We're experiencing it now. So today, uh, we're going to kick off this series by talking about spring. We're looking at spring today. And this fits so well, doesn't it, with where we've been for the last month? Um, Talking about resurrection and rebooting, talking about fresh starts in every area of life. Here's what Wikipedia says about spring. I thought this was good. Spring is the season embodied by the ideas of rebirth, rejuvenation, renewal, resurrection, and regrowth. Things turning green. I love when things start to turn green. And and I even love, for a little while, Un, when it's unmanageable, right? Like you're like, oh my gosh, like things are just like almost like overgrown. No, I, I love that. When nature is coming back to life, not just when things green up, but man, when you hear like birds chirping every morning, um, nature just coming to life, when the temperatures start to warm up, it's all just so perfect. Anyone else with me on this, right? <laughs> you guys are like, we're waiting for summer. We want like the scorched earth. No, the heat, right? Um, I don't know about you, but personally, I am always, always, always the most hopeful in the spring. Spring gives me hope. It just sort of feels like new life. So let me ask a question. Think about this. What feels like spring to you? What feels like? like spring to you. Let me just give you some, a few things. Can I give you a few things that just feel like spring to me? And I don't mean like, you know, necessarily like examples of like things outside, but just like sometimes in life things happen and they just feel like spring. Let me give you some examples. So last week in the second gathering, right over on this side of the room, uh, we had Pastor Dave and Dot Baines who led the Alliance Church that used to be the, the, what is now that end of our building. And I, I, at one point in my message in the second gathering, acknowledged them and really thanked them for their faithfulness to teach the Bible, to disciple people, to prayer walk this community as the foundation that God used to build on what has become New Hope. And, uh, and it was amazing how people just, like it wasn't like, you know, like, golf clap. I mean, people literally erupted into applause to thank and honor them. And it, would, it just felt like spring to me. It felt awesome. It, it felt right. I'm actually today, right down here in the front row, uh, it actually our friends of mine, uh, Pastor Chris and Sherry Eads, uh, Pastor Chris was the pastor of the college ministry that Bethany and I attended while we were in college. And and we have been friends ever since, and it's awesome to have them uh, here today. Uh, let me tell you another thing that, uh, that felt like spring to me. So um, I actually, Bethany and I hung out with some people uh, not too long ago, and, uh, and these friends uh, of ours uh, have actually only ever been to New Hope when we were having this conversation. They've been here one time. And, uh, and they were in ministry and then out of ministry for a while. And they were getting ready to like sort of think, we need to get back in ministry. And so I, I was, we were having this conversation. And, uh, and I'm like, okay, so maybe there's these different options. What are you guys thinking about? Like, what would you prefer? And it was amazing because she said, you know, the one time we were at your church, we walked in and people were so welcoming. And it was such a good experience. And she said, I remember what it was like to walk into a church as a single mom with two, two young kids and not really getting greeted well or having people maybe look at me strange. And, and she just said, if I was picking the kind of church that we would be at, it would be a church just like New Hope. That felt like spring, huh? Just awesome, awesome. And, so, and that's like you guys. You guys are awesome. Um, I I was actually mowing yesterday, and uh, at one point I was just mowing along, and my dad, my dad was always the kind of guy who would like puttered around the yard, he cut grass, he liked to plant trees, he'd do things like that. I was mowing yesterday, and there was this moment when I was mowing that I just sort of had this overwhelming sense 
that my dad would have loved the place we live now. He would have loved sitting out on the porch. He would have loved sitting on a mower and just drive, puttering around my, he would have loved that. Like I just, it was just this sort of, you know, like I, there was a sadness because I wish he could have experienced that and I wish he could be here, but there was just sort of a joy of, of thinking about my dad. Uh, let me give you one more, something that feels like spring. So I took this picture earlier this week. These are the trees along my driveway. Check out this image, right? Uh, beautiful, but <laughs> it's also fleeting. I took those at the start of the week, and now all those beautiful trees are actually the same sort of muted burgundy color. All the sort of brightness is sort of just over with the rain we've had, and this week they've all sort of turned into basically the same color. Now, here's the thing, because spring is my favorite time of year, I want spring to last forever. I really do. Uh, I enjoy it exponentially more than the scorching heat of the summer, and I even talk about summer that way because of how I feel about summer relative to spring. But all the same, I'm thankful for the reminder that seasons don't last forever. Anybody else with me on that? It is so nice just to be reminded that seasons, no matter what, even if it's one you love, they don't last forever. I, I'm not going to go into details, but this last week for me, um, Sunday was incredible, and then starting the very next day, this whole week, it was literally marked by death and disappointment. The whole week, it was terrible. I'm glad I talked about rebooting last week. It's like I needed a reboot day because I'm like, this week is terrible. But thankfully today we're talking about spring and not winter, right? The hope of spring keeps us going through the worst of winter. We think, man, that seed that's in the ground, right? Like it's dead. Or best case scenario, it is frozen but it's getting ready to come back to life. Of course, Easter is celebrated in the spring, right? With, with new life and resurrection. So let me, let me sort of like turn, let's turn the corner. Let me ask you this question. What feels like spring to you spiritually? If, if you're thinking about this, not just in terms of the actual seasons we physically experience, what feels like spring to you spiritually is it a season of growth where you really feel like you're growing and learning a lot uh, is it a time where your connection with jesus just feels really fresh and easy maybe it's a it's a season when it feels like you pray and and your prayers are actually getting through right and your connection with god seems real and vibrant and active and alive and in the springtime sort of like our grass grows like crazy sometimes when we're in these spiritual spring moments it just feels like things happen spiritually almost in an automatic sense right we always talk about how you have to work at things you have to sort of put in the time and energy and effort but in these spring seasons things happen in a more automatic way than they do at any other time of year I think back to the, the spring, uh, or to the year I decided to be a follower of Jesus, and that felt so springy to me. It was August 18th, 1989. Um, I was 14 years old. I'd been 14 uh, for two months and 10 days. So if you want to get me a birthday present, you can do the math on that and figure out when my birthday is. Um, and, uh, but that, that, that week, that whole season really felt like this. It felt like spring. And Andrew Felker was my camp counselor who'd been building a relationship with me for years, trying to just love me and tell me about Jesus. And he was the one that walked me to Jesus and prayed with me to begin my journey and my relationship with him. Andrew actually bought me my very first Bible. And, uh, and I mean, it was probably a $10 or $12 Bible. Um, I still have it to this day. And he wrote a verse inside on, just inside of the front cover of the Bible. And it was the first verse that I ever memorized. And again, this verse just sort of screams spring to me. Watch this. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, 
they are a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Isn't that awesome? Does that feel springy to anyone else? Okay, like, are you guys like here today or is there just cardboard cutouts? Like, does this feel springy to anyone else? Yes. All right, that's a little bit better, right? But, but what do we do? Because this is, like, this is the truth. What do we do when we read something like that? We read it, we, we see it, we hear it, but we don't at all feel it. What do you do, right? Like, I, I get it and I'm in Christ, and I've accepted Jesus, and yeah, that sort of seems springy, this idea of being a brand new creation, but I don't at all feel that. I don't feel like a new creation. I feel like I'm stuck. I feel like anything but spring. I feel like an old creation still. What do we do in those moments? And I think there's three possible states we can find ourselves in. Possible state number one is this. When, when things are what I call positionally true. When things are positionally true. This is what is ultimately true in how God sees you and I regardless of how we're feeling. This is an important thing, right? Because here's the truth. Do you know that emotions come and go? Right? That feelings are fickle. You can't trust your feelings. Uh, I, I grew up, I had a friend who his dad always would say, uh, uh, you know, like if he was asking if he could stay over at my house, if I could stay over at his house, you know, his dad would say yes or no. And when he said no, my friend would always push back and say, well, why, why not? Like it's the summertime. Why can't I stay over at Rob's house? Son, I just got a feeling in my gut. I got to trust my gut. It's how I feel. That was always his answer 100% of the time. The funny thing is, if we were just staying at my house and like up to, up to good things, his dad like sometimes would say no if we did have sort of a scheme we were trying to do his dad most often would say yes right so it's like his gut was not very reliable right like how he felt could not be trusted that is why who or what we listen to is so important right because when God tells us something regardless of whether we feel it or not that's probably a pretty important thing to listen to and to trust right but if we're not feeling what god says and somebody else tells us something different if we look to or we trust their voice we believe in them we can get ourselves in trouble because here's what god wants you to know that if we are in christ you are a brand new creation the old you has gone and the new you is here this is good news. Let me give you one example of that biblically. Psalm 103.12 tells us that, uh, that God takes your sin and he casts it as far as the east is from the west. Right? The idea here is that, that when we are in Christ, when we are covered in his eyes by the shed blood of Jesus, right? we are perfect. Our sin is as far away from us as it could be. This is positionally true none of this is dependent on your feelings it doesn't matter how you feel if you feel new if you feel like god has forgiven you if you feel like your sin is gone this is positionally true and and may require a working out in some ways for the rest of our lives you ever feel like like here's who i was and i know god sees me as perfect but i still got some lingering stuff i gotta sort of work on, process, get past, right? Like in some ways, we have got to do that literally for our entire lives. That is okay because God sees us positionally perfect. So it's not just about what's positionally true. There's also this idea of something being functionally true, functionally true. This is when things are not just true because the Bible says so. This is when our emotions align with what, what God says and we start feeling it, right? This, this is functionally true. This is when our lives, how we are living aligns and we really start living it out. This is when our spiritual new creation really starts to feel like spring. You know, it's like, I really am a new creation and I'm experiencing that and it's fresh and it's awesome. But let's be honest. We don't just want God to tell us and we don't just want to feel it because we just talked about this, right? Like our feelings, our emotions 
lie to us. What we really want is for both to be true. Right? We want to be positionally true. God says it. And we want to be functionally true. We want, to, we want to feel it. So we want God to say so. And we want somewhat regular experiences that confirm that what God says is actually true in my life. Um, these things together really create something powerful. Uh, I remember back in college, uh, at the start of every semester, we would have this thing called a spiritual emphasis week. And uh, in one year, one semester, the speaker was a guy named Dan Seaborn. He was talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit. Uh, in the Greek, the, the Holy Spirit is called the paraclete, right? And so he was sort of using this, this idea uh, of uh, the paraclete. And so he took that Greek word paraclete and he made it into paracletes. Right? And he talked about, do you remember this, Chris, when Dan did that? Uh, and and he, he was like, you know, he's walking all over the stage. And, and, and he talked about, you know, like in life, uh, we try to do things on our own strength and we're like constantly like losing our footing and slipping. But when the Holy Spirit is with us and upon us, it's like we have supernatural traction in order to live life. It was just a really powerful thought. But I believe using this sort of spiritual spring metaphor, the Holy Spirit is doing something just as powerful. So let, let, let me show you a picture. I just think this is incredible. It's just, and, and I, I wonder if there's like a, a coincidence that it's called spring, and then that's called a spring too, right? Like it's a spring, I know. Um, now I thought of maybe trying to find a pogo stick and like bouncing around here on the stage with that. But I thought that mortally injuring myself while talking about spring was not very springy, so I just decided against that, right? Um, but, but picture this, right? Picture huge springs on, on the bottoms of your feet, right? That multiply your efforts. So like you just like step and you're like literally bounding around, right? Like picture, I know some of you were like, I can't get that picture out of my head now, right? Um, <laughs> Just this idea that we have something with us that gives us exponential returns, that really propels us forward and again multiplies every one of our efforts. The Bible promises this to us. Acts 2.17, I want to look at it sort of in two halves, starts by saying this. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. When? In the last days, right? What? God says, I will pour out my Spirit on who? On all people. And we're going to see this in, in the second half, but like no restrictions to this. There's no age limits. There's no, you know, like restrictions for gender. Really, the idea here is that God is bringing spring for everyone, right? He's bringing spring for literally everyone. But let's talk about the when part again, right? When was the when part? In the last days. So this idea of the last days is not only about some future time. See, when Peter here is, is speaking after receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, right, in the upper room, he uses this Old Testament passage to say that this very thing was happening right before the eyes of the crowd, right? The, the, this was actually taking place then and there. So it is not only that God is bringing a spiritual spring for everyone, it's that he has already brought a spiritual spring for all who are in Christ, right? Like if this happened a couple thousand years ago when Peter was talking, right? Like this has already begun. So watch how this verse ends. It says this, Acts 2.17, your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Young and old, Male and female. In Christ we are equal. In Christ we are one. And he shows us this by pouring out his Holy Spirit in power 
on all of us. Right? This is what he does. And the fruit mentioned here when this happens are three things, right? That there's prophecy. So let's just like, what, it, what does that mean? What does it mean that your sons and daughters will prophesy, right? It means that they will know and speak the will of God. How cool is that? Right? Oh, oh, they don't have enough experience yet. Oh, they're way too young. You know, they haven't learned. They haven't paid the price yet. No, no, no. When the Holy Spirit is poured out, your sons and daughters will prophesy. Doesn't matter, right? Because this is about the Spirit. They, they will be able to... You ever, you ever have these times in your life where you're like, I just don't know. I don't know what God wants. And then he pours out a Spirit and we know and we're able to declare the will of God. Um, that that uh, your young men will see visions. What's a vision, right? It's a divine picture of the preferred future. It's God giving us a picture, even though things are like this now, here's what God wants things to look like in the future, right? Like this is the picture of the, of, of the divine preferred future future again this is some don't don't you want to know that kind of stuff like god what do you want what what do you want things to look like what direction should we be heading when the spirit is poured out this kind of stuff happens your old men will dream dreams you ever have a dream right like just something that god plants within you that you can't shake no matter what um, God has been and he is giving us these things. He, he is. Do you believe this? That he's pouring out his spirit? That he has been doing this? He is doing this? He's going to continue doing this? Um, you and I have these things. Here's the question. What will you do with the spring that God brings? What will you do with it? Because here's the problem. Can I tell you about a problem? We have fallen into a trap. We've fallen into a trap of wanting to go back, go deeper, and have more. Right? So what do we do? Like, we have a spiritual spring experience where we're learning and we're growing, and God sort of gives us prophecies and visions and dreams. And so what do we want? We want to go back to have more prophecies and more visions, and more dreams, and it's so good. So what do we do with it? We go back, hoping for more prophecies, and visions, and dreams. We just want this over, and over, and over again. And listen, there is nothing wrong with taking a minute to enjoy what God has given us. There's nothing wrong with just basking in that, and letting it thaw us out after a long, cold winter. But God gives us these things for action so we can live them and we can share them. He doesn't just give us them to enjoy them and do nothing with them. It's not how it works. So listen, if God does this for you, if he gives you a spiritual spring, what are you going to do with that? Are you going to treat it like an experience you enjoy and hopefully have a bunch more of? Or will you be obedient? Will you actually try to do what he's asking you to do? Let me tell you about a couple. So this couple, this was before my time, but it's when this section of the church was built on and the, the original building was being renovated um, for, for basically youth ministry and children's ministry space. And uh, this couple made a significant financial gift to help complete that. And they didn't make the significant financial gift because they were independently wealthy and just had it to give. They gave the gift because they kind of just had that amount and God asked them to. And they're like, if God wants it, we'll give it. Don't we do that? Like we, we Sometimes we are happy to give out of our abundance, but we're really not so good at giving out of our need. And then this, uh, this same couple, um, actually when I moved here, it was kind of in full swing. They started this water sports ministry. They had a ski boat and a pontoon boat, and they just had people out on the water and, and were using that to disciple them. I still remember they got other people with boats to come, and they had these inner city groups come and just to show them that life could be different and better. 
and to help them see Jesus. I, I, I remember um, at one point they really felt like God was saying, hey, you know what, your ski boat, you love your ski boat, um, but maybe it's become too important, so maybe sell that. And, and I kid you not, like they took their ski boat and they sold it and they gave every penny to, to build water wells in Africa, a ministry that we've supported for, for a long, long time. And then as, as her parents started to get older and her mom's health was failing, they decided to sell the lake house and, and get out of all that and, uh, and move over to Mansfield and start a horse farm kind of on adjoining property with, with the family so that they could be there for that season of life. And, and I was there last uh, Saturday when this horse farm, uh, the Rosie Sea Ranch, officially kicked off. You guys have been doing stuff with it now for, for months and really more than that. Uh, but they, they've launched this equine therapy ministry just where people could come and, and spend time around horses and have it be a life-giving, healing thing. And now, um, actually starting tonight, uh, they're launching Cowboy Church. And I want you, even if you're not planning to come, I want you to take out your like phone and snap a picture of this. So you, you at the very least can pray. Um, So here's their address. It's 1325 Fleming Falls Road, Mansfield, Ohio, 44903. Um, And every Sunday at 6 p.m., starting tonight and going through the end of August, they're going to have Cowboy Church. I'm actually preaching tonight for the first one. Um, so if you like, aren't like, tired of hearing from me today, you, can ha- you have another opportunity uh, for that. And uh, it's just incredible, right? Because they've had these people who have been coming and connecting with, with the equine therapy stuff that likely aren't going to drive the 25 to 30 minutes to come over here for church. So they were just wondering, hey, maybe, just maybe, if we create an opportunity here at our place, maybe we could help other people see and know Jesus this summer in ways that wouldn't happen if we didn't do yet another thing that we feel like Jesus is asking us to do. Hey, Tony and Mary, will you guys come up here? Let's, let's give them a hand. You know, um, uh, I, I love that we get to celebrate you guys. I love that we get to pray for you guys. I love that we get to support. Yet, and, and here's the beautiful thing about them. It's not like you guys did one crazy thing that you know, would make most people roll their eyes and you guys just beat that story to death. Like In the 10 years I've known you, you guys consistently do things that most people would never do, trusting that God is going to do something through it and look after you. And he always has right? He always has. So this is not just an opportunity for us to pray for them. Um, I'm saying this, but I know they would say the exact same thing. This is an invitation for all of us. And it's not just an invitation for us to come to Cowboy Church some this summer. You can do that. Absolutely do that. I'm going to do that. Um, But it's an invitation for us to live our lives differently. Right When God pours his spirit out upon us, gives us a spiritual spring, we, we start to understand his will. We, we start to, to see visions and dream dreams. It's an opportunity for us to, like my friends have so powerfully, to say, God, this might seem crazy and we have no idea what we're getting into, but we're going to move forward. And so listen, I wanted to say a few things. One is this, spring is here. I know some of you, you're like, spring ain't here for me, right? Like, I'm in, a, I'm in a winter season. Listen, would you believe it because God says it, right? Like, it's positionally true, and even if you're not feeling it, would you believe that, that spring is here? And, and about experiencing it, we all do this, right? I do this, you do it. Like, it gets too hot. We're like, oh, I can't wait for winter. It's winter. We're like, oh, I can't wait for spring, right? We do this, don't we? We, we never enjoy anything for what it is. We always complain and we want something different. So if you feel like for you, this idea of a spiritual spring is awesome, but that you're not experiencing that, instead of complaining about that, would you prepare yourself to receive it? 
right? Would you just say, God, this doesn't feel like my reality. I know the Bible says it's my reality because I believe in Jesus, but, but I'm going to prepare myself to receive something different, a new experience. And then when God does this for you, will you not just treat it like an experience to bask in, but will you obey? We're going to close after we pray for Tony and Mary with a couple songs. And I think they're perfect today. The first one is God is able, right? Because you might say, well, if God gives me a vision or a dream, I don't know how I would ever do that. Here's the good news. You don't have to be able because our God is able. What a great thing to declare in song. And then the last song we're going to sing is not to us, but to your name be the glory. We don't do anything for us, but all for Jesus. What an incredible opportunity. I'm, I want to pray for Tony and Mary. Uh, if you guys will stand down here. If any, anyone else, you know them, you just have watched their journey, you've benefited from their journey, you support. If you want to come and just lay hands on them with me, I just invite you to do that as we pray. Jesus, I just want to say thank you. I say thank you for Tony and Mary and God for their consistent and persistent willingness to when they believe that they are hearing from you to, to move, to act, to step forward, to walk. And Jesus, I just pray uh, with the Rosie Sea Ranch, with this, this ministry, this therapy option, God, that you would bless that. God, that you would use that to help people uh, to have their lives changed now and forever. God, that you would, you would breathe life and health and healing and wholeness into people through these efforts. And God, with, uh, with this summer, starting tonight with Cowboy Church, God, I just pray that there would be people who even right now in this moment have no concept of you. Uh, God, who end this summer being connected with you, knowing that they get to, to be with you and live with you and spend eternity with you because of Cowboy Church. And so Jesus, I just pray that you would pour out your spirit on Tony and Mary. God, pour out your spirit on all of us. And God, help us as you fill us with your dreams and visions, not to just enjoy the experience, but God, to do the hard work of obeying and stepping forward. God, may the example of this couple inspire us because you are able and to you we give all the glory. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.